Hello, my lovelies. Today, I'm going to respond to the tag video that Darkest Star ASMR tagged me in, and it's going to be a couple of personal but relatable questions uh, towards ASMR, and then you tag as many people as you'd like, and they are encouraged to participate if they wish, not pressuring anybody. So firstly, I am going to tag Espe ASMR, uh, ASMR Whispering Angel, uh, Lizzie ASMR, and Miss Vindicat ASMR. So if you ladies would like to participate in this tag video, you're tagged. Thank you, Windows. So, um, <clears throat> jumping right into the questions. Uh, when was the first time you experienced ASMR? I think very similar to a lot of other creators that have responded to this. It's probably sometime in childhood, very likely in elementary school, or maybe even earlier. I think I remember in kindergarten I had lice, and I remember going into the nurse's office and having the nurse very gently and delicately comb through my hair, and I think that's probably the first time I recognized that I enjoyed that. Um, so, very, very young. When was the first time that you watched ASMR on YouTube? I would suspect it was 2009 or 2010. I don't exactly remember when it was, but that was the time that was very stressful in my life. And I started relying heavily on uh, hypnosis videos and videos that would help me to relax and to sleep. Um, hypnosis is, I think, where it started. Uh, there was a couple of channels that I listened to rather regularly. Um, and I experienced ASMR even though it wasn't for ASMR. And I think this ties into question number three, which is, what is your favorite unintentional ASMR video? It's really difficult to pick one, um, but my unintentional triggers are specific voices um, and the crinkling of shirts uh, and also visual triggers such as watching somebody get a massage. And I think those are the topics that really brought me into ASMR because there used to be a channel and there, the channel still exists, but they don't upload anymore to it called Mighty Mighty Man. And it's like borderline softcore porn, <laughs> but it's, Asian women in bikinis getting all lathered up and massaged. But man, it looks like it feels really, really good. The camera angles and the way it's filmed, it's not intended for ASMR, I really don't think. Um, but watching somebody get a massage is very triggering for me. Um, there's other channels that I've listened to for hypnosis. I think probably the first one that I had ever discovered was Adini. Uh, and Again, it's one of those voices that I think triggers the ASMR, but not necessarily intended for it. Medical ASMR videos, uh, the geeky medics, geeky medics um, are unintentional and they're meant to be educational. But probably one of my favorite videos is where one of the gentlemen is doing a lymphatic check on another gentleman. <sighs> I wish I could just like take that little snippet right there and make it into a 40 minute clip and I would just watch it nonstop. I would. <laughs> Name the last five ASMR videos that you have watched or ASMR artists that you have watched. Um, I don't have my list in front of me, but I can tell you probably my most frequent are Darkest to Star ASMR. I always fall asleep before I'm able to like comment or anything like that, but Darkest Star ASMR, again, it's, it's the voice. Um, Rolf has a very gruff, very, ugh, if you've heard it, you know what I'm talking about, mm, but his voice puts me to sleep almost instantly. It doesn't matter what he's talking about. He could be talking about peeling your skull back and I would still fall asleep to it. Um, so Darkest Star ASMR, Crinkle Lovin', she's like a staple in my sleep routine, Tender Loving ASMR, and recently I've been listening to a lot of Vindicat just the, the whisper, the whispers, and the accent puts me right out. What is your favorite ASMR trigger to listen to? 
I think for me, I listen to it primarily to fall asleep. So it has to do with the closeness of um, the creator to the microphone, not necessarily speaking. And I think that's where the crinkly shirts come in, is when you feel like somebody is really, really close to you and you can feel their presence, but you feel comforted by it. I think that's probably my most relaxing trigger is as far as audio goes. And number six, what is your least favorite trigger to listen to? Do it. I think mouth sounds can be really, really good or they can be really, really bad and it's hit and miss with me. I don't really have a way to describe it, but eating sounds, I can't really get into. Um, but another one that's very common that is hit and miss for me is really aggressive sounds. So you'll have intense triggers where somebody is very aggressively like scratching the mic or placing the hands on the mic and that it's sometimes overstimulating for me. <clears throat> Do you use ASMR to fall asleep? Or, I'm sorry, to relax or fall asleep? Yes and yes. <laughs> what is your bedtime routine? My entire adult life routine seems to be wake up early, if I can. <laughs> um, record if I can, and go to work, come home, eat, and then probably around 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, um, I will start listening to ASMR or Headspace. Headspace is an app that's primarily for meditation, um, but it helps me to go to sleep and to detach and then go to sleep. Then I wake up probably around six o'clock in the morning and I repeat the process all over again, five days a week. <laughs> but my nighttime routine is probably trying to wind down, um, having a glass of wine, melatonin if I'm not feeling tired, and then my normal routine of listening to YouTube videos or on the Tingle app because the Tingle app, um, you can actually set a timer so if a video is really, really long, but you only want it to go for, say, 20 minutes, um, you can set a timer on it. So the Tingle app is also really, really fun. What is your favorite trigger to do? Do it. Um, I'm going to guess that this question is aimed towards making the ASMR video, not necessarily, um, you know, what I enjoy, but I think probably going from side to side and gently speaking, like I'm looking at your ears. I think that's probably my most frequent one that I do. So it would be like if I go to your side here and I'm going to examine your left ear. Or I'm sorry. I'm testing out today an isolation chamber for my microphone and I am very interested to see whether or not it actually blocks out any additional audio. So you might see me looking out the window and I'm looking at my computer screen on the monitor because I want to see whether or not it's picking up the audio or if it's isolating it a little bit better. All right, where was I? Dun, dun, dun. What is your favorite trigger to do? What is your least favorite trigger to do? do this too. I don't really have a least favorite. I think if I have a least favorite trigger, I usually just don't do it. Um, I don't really have one. How long does it take you to make a video? Typically the recording takes anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. It depends on what the theme is, whether or not trying to be short or long or the circumstance. Editing can take anywhere between, I want to say an hour and a half to three hours. Again, it depends on the number of interruptions and how long the video is. Um, I have worked on some projects that have taken me 10 to 12 hours worth of editing. Um, and then 
the compiling of it depends on what computer I render it on. Uh, compiling will usually take anywhere between three to four hours to render and then uploading. So per video, and that's not like actively working on something, but per video, I would probably estimate it around six to seven hours. And that includes like upload time and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I lost my place. Have you ever gotten tingles from your own videos? Yes. I'm gonna very quickly check to see if my camera's still recording. Yes, it is, okay. <laughs> I have a little mirror that, hey, look, you can look at yourself. I have a little mirror that I shine behind and I just wanna to check to see if I can see the little red light blinking. So have you ever gotten tingles from your own videos? Yes, but usually not from the ones where I'm talking or whispering because I can't stand the sound of myself. Um, but. A lot of the videos where I don't do a whole lot of speaking or whispering. Yeah, I, I do. I like the sound of latex gloves. That might be one of my favorite things to do is latex gloves. Um, because it reminds me very much of those instances where, you know, a nurse was very delicately sifting through your hair. Um, so latex gloves remind me of that. Uh, the sound of rain, um, crinkling. I have one shirt in particular that has a really nice crunch to it do enjoy that. But the talking, I can't stand it. <laughs> Ooh. Do you watch your own videos after I create them? No. Um, I've watched a couple of them. Like I've watched them at Doctor Roleplay because that was a very different type of video that I made. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really bored with my own material. What software do you use to edit? Uh, I do my audio recording, not so much editing. I just reverse the channels on Audacity. It's a free program, works beautifully. For my video editing, I use VideoPad. I know that the most common one is probably um, Adobe, the Adobe products. You know, it'll be interesting to see whether or not that isolation chamber works because the traffic here in the morning sucks. Um, a video pad is my primary video editor. It's cheap. It's easy. I'm not that smart and it just works. But Adobe Premiere is probably the primary one that everyone uses out there. I've tried using it. I rented it for a month or it's a subscription. So I had it for a month. I'm way too stupid for that. And I'm way too old to learn new things. But video pads are really nice. It's really easy. So eh, I'm just, I'm just used to it. It's like 59 bucks too. What time of day do you film? I typically record right now. It is 626 in the morning. I usually record very, very early because it's the only time of day where the heating and cooling usually does not kick in. The AC usually kicks in around eight o'clock and that's because it gets sunny and it heats up. Um, but that might change for winter, but it's also usually the only time that I have to record. At night, I'm tired. I get out of work at 6.30 and I just come home and I eat and I have a glass of wine and I get tipsy and the first thing that I wanna do is usually just relax. Um, recording sometimes seems like more work, but not always, sometimes I'll record late at night. And my makeup looks terrible at night. It, it's pretty much all melted at that point. Dun, dun, dun. What is your favorite video that you have made? The Mad Doctor, the first Mad Doctor that I ever made. It was one of the most organic videos that I ever made. Um, I did not plan it. It happened at a very chaotic time in my life and it was just a very unique video that I liked. I, I really enjoyed recording that. Uh, and I think that ties into one of these next questions. Um, this is question number 18. Question 17 is, have one of your videos had an unexpected negative fan reaction? Yes, actually, maybe that is the Mad Doctor. It wasn't the first Mad Doctor roleplay, but it was the second or the third one where somebody had written me a really long post. I eventually deleted it because it was just nonsense. Um, but someone had accused me of being very insensitive and that my sense of humor was victimizing those that have ever been held hostage by somebody. I mean, it was just, 
I think when you get those types of responses, your first reaction is defensiveness, but your second reaction is, well, sh am I actually, like, is anybody really affected in that way or are they just being melodramatic? And then I go back to thinking, why the hell are you watching something that is so traumatizing to you? I mean, just don't watch it. But I don't really know how to properly react to something like that, but it did have a negative reaction. Someone was very traumatized by that video. So maybe I should have put a disclaimer on it. I, I guess I just didn't foresee it. And I think that that relates to question number 18. What video of yours do you think didn't get the love that it deserved? And it would have been the first Mad Doctor. And my attachment to that video is much different than a viewer's, um, I'm sure. But that video was created right before tax season where our CPA had quit and they just stopped communicating with us. And then I was like forced to file taxes that I've never filed before. And um, I was in the office waiting to meet a new CPA that would help me to make that transition and they didn't show up on time. So I was just like sitting at the office at seven o'clock in the morning and freaking out. I didn't know what I was gonna do. We had to get our Schedule K-1s out and we had to issue them to our employee and it was very, very stressful. And when you're making ASMR videos, it's really not the time to feel stress. I try to like meditate and I try to feel okay. But here I was stuck at the office. I was really just nerve wracked. And so I locked myself in the closet and I recorded something very sarcastic. It was like this emotional release of sarcasm and it came out very organically. So I think that's why I really like that video. <clears throat> It's one of the videos that I can watch where I'm not really annoyed by the sound of myself just because of what it was around the time that I needed it. <sighs> but other people probably don't feel the same way about that. What's something that your audience does not know uh, about the behind the scenes of your channel? It would probably be the size of the set that I mean, there's a bunch of different things that I talk about that are kind of funny. And it, I think that when you see from, you know, this angle right here, you don't get the whole feeling for the room. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn around the camera and I'm going to show you what it's like. <laughs> Cause it's kind of ridiculous. All right. So I'm going to start the recording over actually. So this is the set. And that is the loud traffic out there. I'm not sure if you can see that or if you can just hear it, but it's a cement truck in the morning. But this is my little black table that I do all of my work on, my little laptop. You can tell that my backdrop is very small in comparison to the wall, so I have to make sure that I position the camera. Um, my floor is a mess, my props are everywhere. I am an absolute slob. But <laughs> it's all my junk. So I just have a lot of things that are strewn about the room. And that's probably that's probably um, behind the scenes that people might find interesting. All right, what question are we on? What's the most absurd request you've received from a fan? Simulating a sex scene. Like, simulating me on top of somebody. I'm not going to elaborate. I'll let you use your imagination. The answer to that request was no. Do your family and friends know that you make ASMR videos? They do, but I don't know if they know the full extent of it. My parents know that I have a YouTube channel. My dad is on Facebook and I talk about it sometimes, um, but he just knows that I have a YouTube relaxation channel. He's never watched it, at least I don't believe he's watched it. Uh, he really doesn't know what it entails. He told me early on, he said, well, if you're gonna start YouTube, just don't do porn. It's the advice of my dad, just don't do porn. My aunts and uncles, though a little bit more extended, I believe they do know a little bit more the extent of what ASMR is. 
Um, specifically one of my aunts. She also has a YouTube channel. Uh, so that, uh, yeah, yes and no to various degrees. Have you ever been recognized in public? Yes, twice. Um, one of my customers, uh, I was working on her phone and I had seen that she had an ASMR video on when I was working on it and I, I was like, oh yeah, I make ASMR videos and I showed her my channel and she was like, oh my gosh, I've, I've seen that but I never actually clicked on it. Um, so maybe it wasn't so much publicly recognized as much as we coincidentally bumped into each other. And the other uh, public recognition was when one of the boys that I went to, I call them boys, we're adults now. One of the men that I went to school with um, from like first grade, he sent me a message one day and he goes, oh my gosh, I just saw your channel and I can't believe I instantly recognized you. And so that was kind of awkward. <laughs> but... Question 23, what inspires your video ideas? Most of the time it's through requests. I have my own idea of what I like in ASMR videos, whether or not it's my own triggers that I'm trying to recreate, um, but most of them come from requests. A really good example of that would be the recent TMJ one where you get lockjaw. Um, that was recommended by a viewer and um, I would have never suspected that it was such a big problem for so many people out there. So requests are always highly appreciated. Um, the other inspiration comes from watching other videos, seeing what other people are doing, personal experiences in life. I think probably one of the most frequently watched videos uh, on my channel, the one where the blackout. Guys, my gosh. That's why I don't like recording at this hour. Um, the most popular video that I have on my channel, the one that has the most views, was after a hockey blackout. And um, kind of touching on the subject of having a stroke or a seizure, and it was around the time where a very close family member of mine had a stroke. And some of the neurological testing that they did and I observed them doing on her, um, I tried to recreate because even though it's a very stressful and unpleasant situation, it was also, um, you know, a medical ASMR, so it was kind of educational. So, and she's better now, so much, much better. So. <clears throat> Where do you find yourself self spending most of your time online? I'm guessing that this question is aimed towards your social media and it would probably be Facebook. I have a Twitter account, but I'm really neglectful of it and I really don't know how to use it very well. But I try to stay tuned in to at least one social network and that seems to be Facebook because I just, I just don't have that much time. I've thought about creating an Instagram account, but I'm afraid that I would like painfully neglect it, but I still may. Um, the other portion of my time that I spend online is usually on AliExpress or Wish.com. <laughs> I waste way too much time and money on there. The last question. What advice would you give to someone who wanted to make their own ASMR content? This was a question that I actually dwelled on for a very long time. I was mowing the lawn day before yesterday and I was mowing two acres and I thought about this question the entire time because I don't exactly consider myself to be a beacon of wisdom to bestow on anybody. But now that the channel is about two and a half years old, I've gotten like a mediocre feeling for ASMR creations. So do it for multiple aspects. One, it is a very gratifying hobby. It's a very gratifying medium. The community is so welcoming and chill. And I mean, for crying out loud, we just want to sleep. Um, we want to sleep, we want to chill, we want to relax. I think a lot of people are introverted in this community. So it's a commonality that you're like, hey, I want to, I want to have common interests with people, but I really don't want to go out in public. So when you have that opportunity to interact independently and to not be out in public and feel that anxiety, it's a very enjoying platform. I, I think that anybody that wants to start an ASMR channel or create content, 
I can totally relate to that. And it's sort of a selfless motivation because at first when you start, you're doing it because you usually want, at least I assume, usually want to try creating something for selfless reasons. But when I say don't do it for a single reason, to do it for multiple aspects, um, you can make money at this. Let's not beat around the bush here. Money is something that is brought up frequently in the comments section, curiosity, people are very polite, maybe they don't ask, but maybe you want to know, how much can I make at this? I mean, if you're going to invest the time and the resources, getting a good microphone, getting props, getting a good camera, getting the software, learning the software, there's a lot that goes into it. So I'm going to break down some numbers for you, or at least my best understanding of those numbers, and take it for what it is. But I'm going to share how much I made in the month of August. But there is a disclaimer to this. Um, YouTube is not a stable platform, or at least it has proven to not be stable. The adpocalypse happened about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, and it was a really big thing that people talked about, creators talked about, and some of the big creators that make this their full-time occupation were really questioning what the hell they were going to do um, because YouTube really just pulled the rug out from underneath a lot of people. And it wasn't just ASMR, it was a lot of people. It was vloggers, it was beauty enthusiasts, everybody across the YouTube spectrum had problems. So my advice would be to enjoy it, but also understand that the platform is not stable economically. YouTube can change its terms of service anytime it wants. To give you an idea, when I first started my channel in January of 2015, so the channel is now two and a half years old, about seven or eight months ago in February, my YouTube revenue was $154. So when you see mean comments or people being complete twats and saying, oh, this is just some hoe cashing in on the ASMR thing, it'll pass. $154. I don't know what that translates to with different currencies. <laughs> but seriously, you can't you can't make a hobby. I mean, heck, a hobby's bead wrapping or knitting. They cost more than the profit that you would make in that month. But in the month of August, I made $795. And that gets to be a little bit more relatable. Um, it's still not a full-time income. So if you think, I, I mean, I probably average seven to 10 additional work hours per week on top of my already 50 hour work schedule. So some ASMR ho just cashing in on this. I'm not even making minimum wage on it. And I work a full-time job. It's a fun hobby, but I would like to at least point out that you're being a ridiculous twat by saying something like that. But I'm not going to deny that the money is an incentive. On mornings when I don't want to wake up at five o'clock, I think to myself, well, maybe if I could earn a little bit of additional revenue, I could buy additional props. I could buy a better microphone. I'm still using the same Yeti microphone that I bought about a year and a half ago. Money is not only an incentive for your hobby, I very, very much enjoy the hobby, but the equipment is expensive. Uh, you're looking at a $600 camera. You're looking at a $190 microphone. I just bought a $70 isolation chamber. I got a new pop filter to put on the mic. It's an expensive hobby. So you don't have to use really high-end equipment, but with ASMR being around as long as it has, I know that a lot of viewers really just expect high quality productions at this point in time. Um, I don't even really consider mine to be a high-end. It's like mediocre. And I'm very grateful for the people that hang out with me and they patronize me and they support me in more ways than just emotional. Um, because equipment's damn expensive. It can be. It doesn't have to be. Some of the old school ASMR, I still really dig. So if you're starting a channel, you don't have to jump in, you know, with everything that you have. 
start out recording on your phone. Start out recording with a microphone that's attached to earbuds. I know that those condenser mics can be really, really good, especially if you're doing mouth sounds. They can pick up really well. Um, so the second piece of advice is don't feel like you have to jump in all at once because you don't. You can make those incremental um, jumps. You can branch out into other avenues, such as the Tingles app. Um, the Tingles app is really good at getting independent, um, personalized contributions. So when somebody watches a video and they want to say, you know, I want to patronize this person, they can tip you. And that's yours. That's your money. Patreon, also fantastic. Sponsors, fantastic. More revenue. More revenue means earning a living. And there's no shame in wanting to make this a full-time occupation, a full-time hobby. Um, at least I don't believe that there's any shame in it. I understand the realistic investment that has to go in aside from what the trolls on the internet and the twats on the internet will tell you about jumping in on this, cashing in on this face. <laughs> um, so there's money to be made in it and it's a, gratifying hobby and you know the cliche setting of if you find a job that you like you're never really working that's true um i encourage people to try it there's no harm in trying it and you'll find yourself enveloped into a community of people that really just want to relax and chill out it's a really fun place to be you get to meet with other people and if you decide to go further with it you have all the opportunity in the world to go as far as you want with it. You can go full time. You can invest in a studio and sound canceling foam and just go nuts with it because it can be a wonderful experience. Um, and I think that more than anything, I would encourage people to try it because whatever your decision is afterwards, you can stick your hands into it and, and feel it and enjoy it and get the feedback that's wonderful um collaborate with other wonderful creators it's well worth it and if you're looking at it from a business aspect there's no shame in doing that you're not some hoe cashing in on something that is not well deserved or earned um i don't think that the majority of people who watch asmr feel that way and for those who do not understand or see it from that perspective, that's fine. Um, I feel like I've wasted enough time on those types of trolls that are just asshats, small little dicks trying to act really, really big, but you're not. Um, pulled up a thick skin because they will forever be there. They're adult children. So, is there anything else I wanted to include? Okay, one little announcement, and I'm probably doing it preemptively but I'm excited and I can't contain it, is that I may be starting a second channel. Um, it's going to be, I haven't really come down with a name for it, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that, but it's going to be a ordinary channel for those who want to feel more glamorous and to try new things, but don't necessarily have the big budget. Like, for instance, I'm I'm below middle class, I don't make a whole lot of money, and I watch a lot of beauty tutorials and they're using like 60 and $100 eyeshadow palettes. I'm like, I can't afford that stuff. I'm in my mid thirties, I'm starting to develop crow's feet. I'm starting to get the laugh lines. I may even have a gray hair or two or three. So I'm gonna start an ordinary channel for ordinary people that want to occasionally take care of themselves, self-care, feel glamorous. I'm not a makeup artist. I'm a very ordinary, ordinary, ordinary person. And I'm gonna test out various products that are economical. I'm never going to own an eyeshadow that costs me more than $15. <laughs> so that's the type of channel that I'm aiming for. It's not gonna be just aimed towards the beauty end of things, but I'm gonna be trying all sorts of things. I'm gonna be trying hair removal. My husband is gonna get involved in it and he's going to help me wax my upper lip hair. I'm gonna try different things for skincare. And a lot of the websites that I'm gonna be using are going to be foreign because they are popping up in the media everywhere. And I think that there are very 
good resource um, for trying things that are out of the ordinary you may not hear about. So different types of face care products, Asian face care, especially Korean face care, um, is awesome, but we have no recognition of that in where I am, which is central US. Um, and this is not going to be aimed just towards women, but those that are concerned with aging hairlines, um, recessing hairlines, age lines, fine lines, erasing the acne scars. I mean, I'm in my thirties, damn it. Why do I still have acne problems? Um, so I'm going to be trying a bunch of different facial care things that are maybe not FDA approved. So take into consideration, I'm going to be putting stuff on my face that I might react very poorly to. And I want everyone to be able to experience that with me and what works for me, what doesn't. I work a nine hour day, five days a week. So I will take little check-in videos to show how various products wear throughout the day. Um, fun stuff for us ordinary folks. So that's the announcement. And I ordered tons and tons of stuff to start with. So if you have recommendations for something along those lines, I welcome them because I will run out of ideas. Um, it may take a while before I can get the channel up and running because a lot of these products are shipping from China or Russia or the Ukraine. So they're going to be probably a month delivery time, but that gives me some time to plan for the channel. But look forward to it. I will post links in an announcement video when that happens. Okay, my lovelies, I am going to go to work. It's almost time to go. I'll catch you all later.